This is Stars and Scopes with your friend Uma. Updated every new and full moon with guidance based on planetary transits in the current sky and extra support from tarot. For accuracy, take a look at your rising sign first if you know it, and do feel free to listen to your sun, moon and rising if you'd like the full picture. If you're interested in your birth chart, check out the readings page at umaruby.com. And if you'd like to support the work, head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby and you can buy me a coffee. Finally, if you're a visual learner, look up Uma Ruby Tarot on YouTube and you can watch and learn. Okay, let's take a look. Hello Virgo and Virgo Rising, welcome to your horoscope for the new moon in Libra. It's happening on Monday the 26th of September at 7.54am if you're in the Southern Hemisphere with me. So as far as experiencing the dark night and the manifestation potential, it might be worth thinking about this lunation the night before. It'll be just as dark and just as black on this side of the world. So there's a lot to be discussed about this lunation. First of all, it is happening in your second house, which rules your uh, talents and your potential for uh, manifesting abundance, your sort of material security. But there's multiple aspects that are happening that I think might be really interesting for us to go in. And I've just pulled your tarot cards here in the intro, which are going to prompt me as we move forward. I, I want to bring your attention to Gemini and to Mars. I know that we've discussed this before, Mars's long journey through Gemini is going to be happening for the next seven months, or maybe six and a half months now. But Gemini rules your 10th house, which is your career and your most public face. And so in some ways that has a relationship with your second house. I think the, uh, the frustration that's going on there for you at the moment, Virgo. There's a growing, uh, warming, heating up of Mars's energy in that tenth, and perhaps the way that you're being publicly perceived is at odds with the way that you would prefer to be publicly perceived. There might be some kind of forward-moving action, some direction that feels really searing at the moment and it might be leading to outbursts in that way it might be leading to friction in terms of your your uh, public reception i bring this up because the devil card does talk about habitual behavior so if there is some recurring uh, frustration some recurring anger some spot fires that you need to put out to cool things down in regard to your most public self, then this would be why. And it's probably a good thing at this moment, at this lunation, this new moon in Libra, which is about balance and about uh, justice as well. It might be a good time to consider Mars and its effect over your, your public self and find the reasons why and work and work with that energy of forward movement in that space. It's not to say that you should uh, stop being ambitious in any sense. It's definitely maybe just a reminder of why it's feeling so hot at the moment. Now, there's some interesting energy here going on in your tarot cards, which I will describe, but let's go back to the lunation for a minute. So the tarot card that responds to two degrees of Libra, where this is playing out, this opportunity to manifest, to ask for what it is that we need, is the Two of Swords, which is a moment of contemplation. It's a moment of stillness, and it's a, almost a separation from one's emotional response in order to get intellectual and to get clarity of mind, because there's a polarizing truth that has been brought up in your conscious awareness and so in that way the two of swords reminds us that sometimes we need to separate ourselves from our emotional response in order to really absorb the truth of that polarity 
and then from there we can make the informed, decisive action. So relate that to your second house, relate that to your talents and your access to abundance, your money, your material wealth. Interesting to have Libra rule that house too because I imagine that whatever it is that you're attempting to accrue in this lifetime is for the benefit of not just yourself but for other people, for relationship, for a sense of equality and justice, which is just something that I want to mention as being very admirable and a beautiful aspect of the Virgo soul. I am speaking specifically to my Virgo risings here for the house placements. Now, also in regard to this lunation, there is an interesting conjunction, but not. Mercury has stationed retrograde since the full moon in Pisces and has now at this new moon in Libra two weeks from then traveled back into Virgo. Mercury rules your sign, Virgo. Mercury is the planet energy that allows you to open that portal to spirit and to absorb the messengers, the messages from the messenger and to integrate them in the physical plane through ritual and through soul searching and through philosophical learning. This is why the hermit card is the major major secret for Virgo. So let's think about this in terms of the messenger entering your second house initially. Entering your second house, perhaps there were brain waves that you were having in relationship to what it is that you need to realign in terms of your your finances. But the retrograde motion of Mercury is a reminder that we don't need to act now. It now is not the moment to make any hard and fast decisions as Mars in your 10th would so wish you to do right now, to get out that blade and start cutting and editing and releasing. Mercury, having entered Virgo again, brings us back to your soul sign, your soul purpose. Again, I'm speaking specifically to Virgo rising. So in that moment of re-entry to the hermitage, I wonder what's coming into your awareness. I wonder if my explanation of Virgo as a soul sign has been enough or has spurred you on enough to learn more about the hermit in the major arcana of the tarot, to learn more about your soul purpose, irrespective of the virginal traits. One thing to remember is that the, the language of astrology can evolve with us and it can move and it can refine. That's its purpose, is to meet up and find the correlations with consciousness as it lays right now. And so when I do think of Virgo, I always think of the hermit, and I think of the hermit in the most beautiful, uh, mystical way. I think about the wise one that retreats for a time from society in order to absorb the lessons so in that way, what is coming forward for you? What is Mercury in retrograde? What are the messages that you need to go over? What, are the, what, are the, what is the information, the truth that began to inform your second house of material value but needs to go back into the soul house for a moment to meditate and contemplate again? And hopefully this dance can help you reconcile some of that Mars energy in the 10th. I can feel the fire. And I think that that would be a really great salve for that fire because you're in it for the long haul for the next six months. Now let's get to your tarot. So I can see here perhaps the repetition of brain, the repetition of think of Virgo in a low vibration that is complete self-criticism and pessimism and the lens of perfection that can sometimes be put on the outside world can then be drawn back on the inside and the measuring stick 
that Virgo has the uh, expectation of some form of perfection can be really debilitating if reversed in a low light. But I think Spirit's really asking you at this lunation, at this new moon, to consider if you're living a life half-lived, to consider what your potential as far as your, your greater understanding of yourself and, and other people and your potential as far as accruing wealth and abundance in order to serve the other. Think about the limitations perhaps that you've put on yourself up until this point and think about the strategies that can be found in a bit of soul searching, in a bit, in a bit of time, practical, uh, sacred time back at the hermitage for a moment. Think about those lessons that were maybe cropping up you know, a month ago as we discussed the Virgo new moon and think about what has lingered in your understanding of all of that and what potential we can, we can work with. I think I see you in collaboration is what I see. It's a really hearty sense of satisfaction there's going to be in terms of the work that you do. I think that let's take the lessons from the hermitage, let's take the lessons from this alone time, this self-discovery, this inward gaze, but let's then externalise the gaze and let's get back out into some sense of community because I see you working together beautifully with others and I see a great offer of potential, a great emotional offering that will arise from that experience. It's going to be perhaps a great salve for you in terms of your relationship with yourself and in terms of your relationship with your emotional body. Um, there's a lot of fire with Mars, you know. There's a lot of thought with Mercury. But remember, Venus is also in Virgo at the moment, the god of love and beauty. In some forms of astrology, some teachings, the sign of the soul in the truest sense. We look to our Venus placement for the opportunities to discover where we can find the practical ways to live up to the highest vibration of our soul purpose. In the transit land, Venus is sitting in the Virgo lounge right now. So there's a real nice relationship to you and to soul and to, to beauty and love and enlightenment. So you needn't act out at the present moment. It would be a really good time to let this Mercury retrograde period play out and have its time in, in our awareness. And then when Mercury stations direct, which I will have to write that date down because I don't have it in front of me. I believe it's two weeks away from this lunation. That will be the moment that, Virgo, that Mercury will then progress through your second house again and with it potentially bring some of these lessons that you've been discovering, exploring in your, your first house, your house of the soul. I think one, I've been having many readings this weekend back to back for, for folks with their birth charts and one emblem of the tarot and of the zodiac that came about time and again, either in somebody's chart or in the conversation, was the hermit, the truest Virgo energy. And this feeling that a lot of people are experiencing of retreat from some sort of structure of community or, or society. So in that way, Virgo, you're not alone in that. This is a transitional period for many of us, I think, I tend to believe, for humanity as it exists. We're going through a gateway here and perhaps some of the things that you used to rely on as far as your identity and your position in life and what you thought it was that you were here to do, perhaps some of this is really being urged to fall, fall back and to fall away. And you'll come to know that, you'll come to realise that by exploring your first house and by really 
finding the strategic ways and the perfecting ways, Virgo, to live out your soul's purpose in this lifetime at its highest, highest octave. We can go into that more with a personal birth, birth chart. I think the spirit chart reading has been the most successful and most popular one so far. And that talks all about the relationship between our sun sign, our identity, our moon sign, which is our emotional self and our habitual self and potentially a place of release and how we can work with those two energies in order to help live out our lives performing at the highest octave of our soul sign. For you, that's Virgo. For you, that is knowledge and wisdom and healing. Well, that's your reading, Virgo, for this new moon in Libra. Again, I'll remind you, manifest abundance, absolutely. I would also, and I would manifest some self-discovery too. Okay, until I speak to you in two weeks for the full moon in Aries, I love you very much, Virgo. Thank you for being here with me. Um, if you'd like to tip, always, you can do that at buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby. And do head over to umaruby.com and explore the readings pages and book yourself a birth chart reading with me. <laughs> until then, bye.